Labour has the unions, National has big business, but we are the association of consumers and taxpayers. So do we have any taxpayers here? <laughs> yep. As for consumers, we face a cost of living crisis. Act called it last December. Others have followed one by one until every party says that there's a cost of living crisis. It's a good example of ACT being the thought leader in New Zealand politics. ACT knows economics. Our party was founded by our country's greatest finance minister. Today, I'm one of only two trained economists in parliament. And if you think that's bad, the other one's Trevor Mallard. <laughs> No wonder the economy is in such trouble. <laughs> the cost of living crisis is something that can only be solved if its causes are understood. As Milton Friedman said, inflation is everywhere and always a monetary phenomenon. And simply, it is too much money chasing after too few goods. You might be surprised that I'm quoting Milton Friedman. He was 80 when I was born and I was 14 when, I, when he died. But reading is a gift, and good ideas are timeless. Bad ideas, on the other hand, do untold damage to people's lives and livelihoods. And that's why ideas matter. Public policy matters. I joined ACT because we're the only party that consistently strives for better policy. What a bad idea modern monetary theory turned out to be. Central banks around the world brought into a fiction that governments could simply print money and settle their debts. The New Zealand government borrowed a net $76 billion from 2019 to this year. It was aided and abetted by the Reserve Bank, keeping interest rates low and printing $53 billion under the large-scale asset program. So what was the effect of the bank buying government bonds? Well, let me quote the, the bank itself. We estimated that New Zealand government bond yields were at least half a percent and potentially more than a percent lower than they would have been without the LSAP program. So one more Milton Friedman line. There's no such thing as a free lunch. All that extra government spending sloshing around is now showing up as inflation. In the two years to March, inflation was a total 8.6%. The government likes to say it's all offshore. Really? The problem is that housing, that went up 43% in two years. With the borders closed, house prices went crazy. Food, that's mostly produced here, but tradable, that went up 7.9%. Clothing, that's mainly imported, it went up 1.4%. The government is right about one thing, though. There is inflation in other countries, too. But what they don't like to tell you is that those countries also indulged in massive spending blowouts. Biden did $1.9 trillion in stimulus. Boris, RIP, raised government spending in the UK to over a trillion pounds for the first time in history. Both Britain and America have rampant spending and rampant inflation. Could these things be connected? Careless government borrowing and money printing and debt finance spending fueling more inflation is what's driven up prices. Rather than show any sign of fiscal restraint, the government has made spending a goal in itself. Forget about results. Instead, set Kiwi against Kiwi, group against group, and then hope that amid all of that noise, nobody notices what you're up to. And I say that we must act before we become a country that we do not recognise, debt-ridden and divided. There is a better way. When I meet people out on the street or out and about in the ACT bus, I hear how Kiwis are really doing it tough these days. The economy is no longer healthy. A healthy economy is not one where every Kiwi should just survive. We must create the conditions for our people to thrive. You know, I met a man recently who had had a $2 per hour pay rise. That's more than $4,000 extra dollars per year, or another $80 per week, but he wasn't seeing a penny of it. It had all been sucked up in extra costs and taxes to such an extent 
that he was considering living in his car. A woman emailed me and said that she was moving her family to Canada since, quote, anyone who works hard, saves and budgets for anything is just being punished. It's so unrealistic to live with four kids here. When costs increase, they will be passed on. We're seeing it at the grocery shop, at the fuel pump, rent and retail. And while, yes, it is happening other places too, in New Zealand it is much worse than it needs to be. The second half of the problem is the enormous constraints our government has put on production. While the rest of the world moves on, our government keeps and has kept restrictions for far too long. We now know that MIQ was pointless beyond November, but our government kept the borders closed until March. Chris Hipkins now says, in hindsight, they kept Auckland locked down too long last year. We're still, we're still required to isolate for up to two weeks with COVID. The first week for your household contact and the second week for you. Two weeks out of the workforce, even if you're infectious, only for a few days. And then we wonder why the economy is sluggish. Jacinda Ardern's abundance of caution has turned into an abundance of costs. And everyone here is paying for that. We have a cost of living crisis because our government makes everything about COVID and forgets about everything else. Some of the mistakes in the COVID response are in the past, but there are things that we could do now. Let all the nurses work and fast track them for immigration. We should make it clear to Immigration New Zealand that their job is to help and not delay people immigrating. We should stop the absurd COVID isolation rules. And while we're here, pass a law that says that councils must consent whatever brands of plasterboard MB says is equivalent to Jim. <laughs> Why do we have 5,300 people working at MB if they can't solve that problem? <laughs> if we tackle the problem of too much money chasing after too few goods, we could get inflation under control. If the government doesn't do it, the Reserve Bank will. They will put up your mortgage rates until nobody can afford anything and inflation stops that way. That's the hard way to stop inflation. And Grant Robertson seems determined to make it the only option. But as I said, there is a better way. And we would cut wasteful government spending. ACT was the only opposition party to release a fully costed budget. We have shown New Zealand what the alternative looks like, what real change means. We show how we could reduce wasteful spending by 6.8 billion, cut taxes and get back to surplus straight away. People think that's big. It sounds big until you consider that Labour have increased government spending by $41 billion in the past three years. It's getting back into surplus that really matters. Surplus means that the government is no longer pumping the economy with extra money. Cutting wasteful spending means we have a target on us for Labour to aim at. And you know, the scare campaign is already being dusted off for yet another year. So I think it's important that we expand on what cutting wasteful spending really means. It does not mean cutting essential services. Health, education, law and order, those will all be funded at the same rate as Labour funds them, because that spending is important. But it's the wasteful spending that needs to go. It's not difficult to find examples. NZTA, or Waka Kotahi, as it's now known, uh, there were 32 full-time communication staff in 2017. And today, there are 88. I know. Labour has 56 more people doing public relations in just one government department. Are you okay with your taxes being spent on that? No. No, not at all, because you're smart enough to get that this points to a deeper problem, that this is a government more interested in spin than solutions. Another example, over at the Ministry of Education, uh, Labour inherited 2,632 full-time staff, and that's bureaucrats that I'm talking about, not teachers. 
And today, there are 3,900. A 50% increase. The result is that, you know, we have more education bureaucrats than schools. You would hope that educational standards had increased. Uh, truancy rates must have plummeted. But I'm not, afraid not. not. It's quite the opposite. More spending, more bureaucrats, much more paper and emails flying around, and worse results. ACT would take the number of bureaucrats back to what Labor started with, about 14,000 fewer, and then focus on the outputs. They'll label us as radical. But is it really so radical to get the public service back to where it was in 2017? This is your money. And spraying it and walking away just means that ordinary consumers and taxpayers in the real world miss out. Let's make no apology for reducing wasteful spending across the board. Altogether, we would force the government expenditure down by 6.8 billion in our first year in government. Because if we're really going to control inflation, then we need to show hardworking taxpayers some respect. In a healthy economy, effort and reward go together. You know, my family background is made up of different cultures and different languages. My first ancestors to arrive here uh, they arrived before the signing of the Treaty of Waitangi. Nora was a single woman with little means, a bounty immigrant from Ireland. My last ancestor to arrive was my grandfather, Ari van Velden. I've heard many stories about his village in the Netherlands under German occupation during World War II. They were very, very different people, but they had something in common. Hope. They had hope for a better future, security and for more opportunities. Many Kiwis have a story like that. And yet, after all of the efforts that our ancestors took to get us here, so many are leaving. MB estimates 50,000 Kiwis will leave permanently in the next 12 months. It's not just the cost of living crisis pushing people away. That's just the latest bump in the road. It's because of our catastrophic slide in productivity. In 30 years leading up to 1982, we fell from third in the OECD to 32nd, and it hasn't gotten better. Slovenia, the Czech Republic, and Lithuania have all overtaken us in recent years. We need an entrepreneurial culture, but this government has waged war on aspiration. Small business, farmers, landlords, really anybody who tries, Bam, down you go, for wanting to actually have the temerity to do better. Young New Zealanders deserve to feel like they have a real future in this country. That if they work hard, they save and invest, then they'll be rewarded for their efforts and not demonised. We know the ingredients to productivity. It's capital investment, skilled people, an entrepreneurial culture, good infrastructure and a regulatory system that works. But unfortunately, we're failing at all of them. ACT would simplify the six tax rates that we currently have down to two. We'd make it clear, simple, and fair. A top tax rate of 28% that's aligned with the company rate, and a bottom rate of 17.5%. It would be the cleanest, most competitive tax system in the South Pacific, and it would recognize hard work and reward. We would introduce a regulatory responsibility bill to spell out the need for defining a problem before throwing money at it, and would remove barriers. <laughs> Amazingly simple. Would remove barriers to investors from democratic friendly OECD countries. Would fund infrastructure by sharing half the GST on construction with the council that consented it. We'd change the Reserve Bank legislation back to focusing on inflation only rather than its dual mandate. These initiatives all spell real change. And we're the only party with the guts to actually spell it out. You know, ACT knows that a strong economy needs to be built around creating conditions for prosperity. We're the only party with a real plan. We're not going to be labour light. This country deserves better than change. It deserves real change. It deserves courage. And that's the role that ACT plays in our country's politics. We're here to say what needs to be said, even when it's not popular. 
We're here to generate. <laughs> We're here to generate ideas, even when they don't fit the current news cycle. We're here because we believe that public policy matters. In times like these, we deserve, you deserve, a principled leadership that actually stays committed to the job. And I think that would be real change. The others have their own special interests, but ACT works for you, and we have to keep going. So please, do consider joining, donating, or recommending us to your friends. It really matters what you decide to do. So enjoy the rest of conference, and make sure that you have your say. And remember, the next election starts here. Thank you.